So we're going to uh, continue talking about uh, verses of advice, taken from uh, Padam Pasange's book, The 100 Verses of Advice. So today we're going to look at two verses. So the, ver the first verse is, The day you were born, your death began approaching. Remember, there is never any time to spare. So, from the moment you're born, you're heading towards death. We know this in the back of our mind. We all know that, that we're heading towards death. But nobody wants to face it because we're scared of it. And that fear of death is causing us not to live our lives fully, not to live our lives happily. Because maybe we don't think about death every day, but it's always there. It's always in the back of our mind, always worrying us. And if we look at uh, our other fears, Quite a lot of our other fears are also based on death. Why we don't want to fly in aeroplanes is because we don't want the plane to crash and we will die. Why we don't like to go up to high buildings because we'll fall off and we'll die. Why we don't like snakes because the snake will bite me and I will die. So quite a lot of our fears can be traced back to death. So it means that a lot of our life is consumed by death. So if we deal with death, if we accept death and accept it's going to happen and deal with it now, it doesn't mean that later on then when we're on our deathbed and then we start worrying about death, it's too late. We can't do anything about death when we're on our deathbed. So now is a good time to be looking at death. You know, we know that we're going to die but we have no idea when it's going to be. So lots of people will say, you know, I'll do meditation or I'll do yoga or other practices when I get old or when the kids go to school or when I'm retired or, you know, who knows if we're still alive at that point. So the time to do these type of practices, the time to work on your mind is now. Now is the time. We can't put it off. We shouldn't even be putting it off tomorrow. Maybe later on today we die. Then we've missed an opportunity to try to, to understand ourselves, try to sort our lives out. So if we look at death then and face up to death, then it's going to help us. So there are several ways that we can be looking at death. There is the Osho way, and Osho is meditation on death, which is quite drastic. And I would suggest if you are going to do that, you do it in a group and you do it with a teacher who fully understands and can support you. Because that meditation is looking at you as you are dead. You're looking at your dead body. You're looking at your body burning. So it's quite drastic. But there are other meditations where they're more gentle and will just gently lead us into understanding and accepting death. One is impermanence. So we can sit down and think of all the things in the world that are impermanent. And then we get to understand, yeah, look at it, everything is impermanent. Nothing is staying the same. Everything is changing and dying. So that then gently makes us understand that we are the same, that we are impermanent. Another meditation that we can do is just to sit quietly and think of all the people since you've been born that have died. Not just your family and friends, but celebrities or people you look at the news and 10 people died there and 20 people died there. So just look at all the people that have died in your life and then it gives you the picture of understanding that, okay, yeah, I can see that, you know, I'm lucky to be here. Another gentle meditation is to do is to sit and meditate on, you know, all the causes of death. How many different ways can I die? There are hundreds of different ways we can die, which again just shows us that we're lucky to be alive with all these things happening, all these causes of death that are around us. We're lucky to even be living. So these meditations gently lead us to understand that death is coming, that death is there, that death is just waiting around the corner for us. It isn't a morbid thing. I know that in uh, several religions, uh, thinking about death is not a good thing. I know I was brought up in a Christian family, and you don't talk about death. 
something that, you know, oh no, don't talk about that. But by denying it, by not talking about it, by ignoring it, it's not going to go away. It's the one thing that we can be totally inevitable, that is totally inevitable in our lives, that death is coming. So, you know, when we reach death, we don't want to be um, fighting it. We don't want to be thinking, I don't want to die, I don't want to die. We want to reach death and be at peace and just think, okay, I've had this life. I've done as much as I can in this life. And now it's time to move on. So by facing up to the fact that we're going to die, it's not a morbid thing. It's not a, something that should make us sad. It's something that should make us understand that, you know, we have this time, don't let's waste it. You know, when we're not facing up to death, we a lot of the time we're wasting time. We're doing things that are not necessarily helping us and they're not necessarily helping other people. So to understand the urgency and the importance of death, that is what is going to help us live our life. So by looking at death, we're going to live our life. So the second of the advice is this, that fundamentally there's no delusion. It's short-lived. Look at the nature of what uh, produces it. So here what they're saying is delusion is a short-lived thing. Delusion is not something that's uh, of our nature. If delusion was part of our nature, it means we won't be able to change it. But it's not. We can change this delusion. So by delusion, what I'm talking about is the way that we see the world, the way we see it through our perspective, the way that we see things through our biases, through our concepts. We see things as permanent. All these things are just a delusion. They're just leading us down the wrong path. But the good news is that they're not part of our true nature. They're things we've added on. If they were part of our true nature, we wouldn't be able to get rid of them. If you took a piece of coal and you were washing and washing and washing it till you tried to make it white, you could never make a piece of coal white because the true nature of that coal is black. There's no changing it. So if delusion was our true nature. It doesn't matter how much hard work we do, how much meditation, how much uh, review of our mind, how much we try to change ourselves. If delusion was part of us, part of our true nature, we wouldn't be able to change it. But the good news is that it isn't, and we can change it, and we can start working through meditation, through mindfulness, through day, doing daily reviews, looking back on what has worked, what hasn't worked in the day, reflecting on our life. All these practices are going to help us chip away and take away this delusion. Once you've taken this delusion, or uh, sometimes in Buddhism they use the word ignorance, once you take this ignorance or delusion away, what are you left with? You're left with peace. Um, so some people call it moksha, nirvana, enlightenment, awakening, paradise, whatever you want to call it. But the true nature of it is, is peace. Which means when you've reached that point, when you've reached that stage, you're not going to be bothered by outside things. You're not going to be disturbed by emotions, strong emotions. You're at total peace. You're just accepting whatever is coming and going you're just watching that river flow right past you. So we need to look at our delusions that way. Sometimes, you know, people say, you know, oh, I can't change, I can't change. We can change. Of course we can change. But it, it's going to take effort. And we're going to have to, first of all, understand, okay, then why am I doing this meditation? Why am I doing this mindfulness? Why am I doing any of my practices? If we know why we're doing it, and why we're doing it is, is that we want to get rid of all these delusions. We want to get rid of all these things that are causing us mental and physical suffering. You know, a large part of your mental suffering is caused by you. The largest part of your mental suffering is caused by you. Caused by the way that you see things, caused by the way that you 
react to things caused by the way you think about things and project onto things all these are coming from you so all this uh, mental suffering we can wash away but it takes time of course it does but the good news there is that we can actually do that we can actually wash this away and then we're left with our true nature of peace you know uh, in lots of religions they talk about gods we talk about Buddha Buddha was a human being so Buddha went through the same things of us you know he had all these concepts he had all his uh, perceptions he had all these misunderstandings exactly the same as us but then he put in the effort and he washed away all these delusions and he was left in peace so that's great news we don't have to pray to a god we don't have to look to any outside higher force we have to do the work ourselves but the good news is we can do that work because that delusion that ignorance that way that we have got accustomed to acting our habits and that can be washed away can be changed we can be left with our true nature just as Buddha was left with his true nature so next time you sit down and, and do your meditation or, or actually next time that you think I should be sitting down doing my de meditation but I don't have time or I'm too tired or I'm too busy or I'll do it tomorrow we should think of these two one that death is coming close and it's knocking on our door so the time to meditate is now and two the reason for my meditation is to wash away all these delusions to make me the best possible person I can be to make myself at peace of course talking about washing it away it sounds easy and of course it isn't easy it's going to take a lot of work but it's doable that's the thing and it's doable through yourself through your hard work not through a God not through a higher being not through praying touching people's feet making offerings it's not through that it's through sitting down and doing the work yourself going inward looking at your mind looking at the way you see things why do I see things why do I do things like that how can I do things better how can I respond instead of reacting all these things are slowly but surely chipping away at this delusion that surrounds our true nature you can maybe look at it like an onion you know onion has uh, many layers so you're peeling off these layers and when you get to the center then you've got peace you've got your true nature but if you're not going to start working on yourself instead of peeling off the onion what you're doing you're adding more things so your onion is getting bigger and bigger so once you start working on yourself once you deal with death and then you start working on your mind you'll start peeling your onion and at the core of that is peace and peace is what we're all looking for peace is what we all want peace means shanti it means quiet it means calm it means happiness contentment all of those things that we tend to look outside to try and find are all actually inside us are all actually our true nature so let these two um, verses motivate you to do practice death is coming let's start doing practice I can change I can find true and lasting peace in my life so let's do the practice so both of these things should be your motivation you should feel now fired up yes I'm going to meditate I'm going to do mindfulness I'm going to look at myself I'm going to reflect back on my behaviors I'm going to look at my habits I'm going to change so if there's anything to take from these two verses it's that it's a positive thing let's do it let's deal with death let's wash away our delusions let's be at peace okay thank you